Uh, well, one way we viewed, uh, many of us viewed movement from the beginning is that it's a post-political movement where rather than making demands or um, engaging politicians or supporting presidential candidates, we're trying to empower people uh, within their own local communities to build communities again, take back public spaces, and create change themselves from the bottom up. I, I, I like the term post political as well. I know some people have problems. My I know you're shaking your head. My stepfather's a sociologist, too. He hates this word. You know, to me, I mean, like, it's this movement is post political, not in the sense that we're doing away with politics. There's always going to be pol political forms of you know, struggle and engagement. But it's post political in the sense that we're moving beyond this political system. Politics as we know it. Yeah, but beyond yeah, Democrat that's and Republican. Not, that's not post political. That would be more political. Political is a very vague word that means a lot of yeah, things. Yeah, it does. You know, I mean, it's uh, the, the, right, the ambiguity so of the word causes a lot of conceptual confusion, I think. Okay, a lot of just for a lot of people uh, uh, named what Adam did back then as anti politics. Mm -hmm. So it's right. not just your. The other thing, I mean, the way, the way I have been describing this movement lately, the way I've been conceiving it, you know how every couple of years you have to go out and buy new things, you have to buy a new couch, you have to buy a new car, a new computer, whatever. We're sort of, we need to go out and get a new government, we need to go out and get a new healthcare system, we need to go out and get a new media, we need to go out and get a new financial and economic system. That's the way I'm seeing this. It's, it is time for a change, for new institutions that work better. But in that case, Tea Party is really effective in doing that, getting new government, shaping, shaping the new government, being engaged, having, having the institution. They have actually the more uh, Republicans now more that. looking at the Tea I respect the Tea Party for doing yeah. something. I think they're misguided. Just both questions, yeah, which, are, which I think are serious, <laughs> and, uh, and let's just uh, gather the you know responses to whatever was said at the, uh, at the moment. But I would like to start with that, and I don't know, uh, Robin. Uh, like, yeah, uh, uh, Scott. Yeah. Uh, okay. yeah. Well, I was, yeah. I, I was going to finish my response. Okay, finish, finish, finish. finish. The and I'll, I'll go quick. Yeah. It seems the one thing that we always talk about in camp, the thing we hate the most is when someone comes up and tells us, gives us an idea and doesn't take any action to follow through on it. So someone says, oh, you should do this. You should be more against the Federal Reserve. It's like, no, our goal, the goal of Occupy Wall Street is not to tell people what to do in order to make the world a better place. That's exactly what we're, that's exactly the model of governance we're trying to move away from. The goal is to inspire people to come up to Occupy Wall Street and for them to tell us what they are doing to make the world a better place. If we make everyone an activist, if we make everyone a leader pursuing their own agenda, we won't need these leaders that are exploiting us anymore. But then 99% of the slogan is completely disassociated with that idea. I don't think so. Uh, well, okay. We have, we have a stat, which mm -hmm. we really yeah. do need to keep to because yeah. some people have been waiting for a long time. I, I just yeah. wanted to take advantage of having Adam here because he is here for a short period of time and tie into um, his uh, initial diagnosis of uh, political class closing on itself, on, on alienation from the society and on, also on the need of working through incremental changes. Um, what strikes me with the Occupy movement is that it brings in new quality to the whole political dialogue because it points to a crisis of capitalist democracy. That, that kind of democracy that we fetishize during our anti-totalitarian time in Poland, uh, fighting the communists. And in that way, Occupy Movement addresses the issues of irreformability of corporatocracy, namely that elected politicians cannot address systemic issues, reforms, simply because the political class is in the pockets of corporations. And that is also the reason why there is so much skepticism about having specific demands or having leaders, because it seems like existing models of political functioning um, are bankrupt. They don't work. And we don't want quick replacement with something that em will emulate the same models. It, someone pointed out that it took a few years from the end of civil war until the constitution was written. And um, 
This is why the protest movement should not be pressured to to immediate formulation of goals and uh, creating leadership that could basically destroy the movement very quickly. The, and so I would like Adam to just basically comment on this new quality, on this completely, of something that points to the very serious crisis within uh, institutional democracy in the whole Western world, where basically uh, large uh, financial entities are running the show and it has nothing to do with the direct representation anymore. Yes. Good question. <laughs> <laughs> and thank you for the, the King is Naked phrase. I think that might become like a big uh, phrase for the movement. <laughs> Ten rok w Hiszpanii, w Chile, w Danii, wszędzie. Oczywisty jest rezultatem niezgody na ten świat, w którym my żyjemy. This movement in Spain, in Chile, and in Great Britain, everywhere is it's in a very clear way a result of the disagreement uh, with the kind of world in which we live. Ty nazywasz to kapitalizm, czyli już sięgasz do języka, którym posługuje się świat, który sam odrzucasz. So you're calling this capitalism, and in that way you're reaching for language used by the world which you're rejecting. Ja bym w tym momencie był bardzo ostrożny. At this point I would be very careful. Bo, bo to już jest daleko idąca ideologizacja tego ruchu, przez, przez którą ten sam ruch się broni. Because by using this term here, this is a very far-reaching way of ideologizing the movement, which is at the same time trying not to be ideological. Bez wątpienia jest taki scenariusz, że to będzie trwało jakiś czas, aż ten ruch osiągnie innego typu samą świadomość i tak dalej. And so there is the scenario that this will last for some time until the movement reaches a different kind of self-consciousness, self-awareness. And so perhaps in what I said, I'm using certain conceptual shortcuts. Ale ja jestem historykiem, I'm a historian by profession. Ja, ja patrzę na te wszystkie ruchy, w których, w których sam uczestniczyłem z perspektywy ostatnich 200 lat. So I look at the movements, even the ones that I participated in, from the perspective of the last 200 years. Long durée. Absolutely. Oczywiście wiesz, że jak spytano Mahatma Tunga i jak ocenia francuską rewolucję, on odpowiedział, że upłynął zbyt krótki dystans przed czasem dla właściwej oceny. So you know, of course, when Mahatma Tunga was asked about what he thinks about Kahayuki, Evaluates the French Revolution. He said it's too early to say. Więc, e, oczywiście, trudno e, tu, tutaj o bardziej precyzyjne diagnozy. To oczywiście jest nowa jakość. To poza spod. So of course it's very difficult to for formulate any more precise diagnosis here. Of course it's a new quality that's beyond the scope. Czy, czy to można nazwać no, no, nową? formą dia, dia, dialogu demokratycznego byłby wstrzemięźliwy z takimi no, pochopnymi ocenami. Nie minął zbyt krótki dystans. <laughs> the issue of utopianism yes. and the critique of utopianism. And my perspective as someone who's transsexual and homeless and an immigrant and unemployed is that we are living in a dystopia and that the folks who are arguing with us not to look for something radically better are in a sense apologists for this 
dystopian reality through which a lot of us are suffering. And I think if you look at a lot of the folks who are most committed to the movement, uh, often those are the folks who have been um, suffered most under the current system. Mm -hmm. I would also say that the traditional uh, avenues of legitimate political discourse are close to people like me. Mm -hmm. And so to say that I need to plug into a system which routinely ignores me and marginalizes, marginalizes me um, is really troubling. Mm -hmm. Whereas, alternatively, mm -hmm. if I can be utopian, if I can be creating a new language, because face it, the language we have to describe politics right now um, doesn't serve people like me, doesn't serve folks um, who are on the outside of the um, system. But if we do create that new language, then it allows folks who are you know, uh, tenured professors, um, who have academic credentials, it allows those people to enter into that conversation in a way that helps us and yet doesn't co opt our movement. But Robin, you are not talking about utopianism. If, the, if, if there is an action possible, if one can do something, you actually, and it is a project of creating a new language, is actually yes. not utopian at all. Yeah, sure. Then we are not talking about utopia. Utopia is uh, only does take place when it's a project impossible, right. transcends the possibility of, reali uh, uh, of realizing that at, at, at a given moment. Mm -hmm. But I think you are, what yes. you may like to say is that this is this inspired, you know, ins yeah. utopian inspired way of thinking in order to transcend the existing practices and institutional. And in, in, in institutional, uh, you know, uh, uh, kind of the way the institutional frame and imprison us. So I, I, I think yeah. that, so, and I'm not sure how. I think that when Adam talked about utopia, he was thinking about things which cannot be done. When when there are things which can be done. That's not utopian. Well, that's I'm, great. I'm okay for pushing for the that. impossible because I believe what has been framed as possible. Mm -hmm. um, serves the interests of those who are currently in power. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I believe we need to expand yeah. what is possible mm -hmm. and do yes. that yeah. creating, Absolutely. taking space and changing mm -hmm. language and mm -hmm. doing other things. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But, but, but quite, I mean, you yeah. have to yeah. say yeah. You, 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 you don't have discussion when you do it that way. Yeah, yeah, but it, otherwise, the devil will just wait and wait and nobody gets to speak. So mm -hmm. we, have, we have three more people on yes. staff. I, I, you are not running this discussion. Yeah, no, yeah, yeah, the, no, the no, whole no, point no, is to no, make us no, different. I'm probably not on that stack, and I'm going to raise my hand since the very beginning. Um, so, yes, yeah. let's go back. This one's on stack. Um, mm -hmm. Well, somebody else was up before me, I'm sure. I have a separate question that would, that would be more, that would change the topic. Do you want to interact to what was said, or was it good that we, we just had an exchange and we go further? We have, to we, we have to talk a little bit about this utopia and the advice that was given, that was given by the 68ers. You know, the, the problem with this advice and these definitions is that we have a history. And we come from a very, very concrete uh, background. Yeah. And when, uh, when Adam or when Jeff talks about utopia, they talk about communism. Yeah. They talk about ideology. Mm -hmm. They don't talk about. Not about they talk about. Yeah. They talk. They talk about about our experience that is not your experience, and that probably it is good that you don't take it into consideration because if you do, you, if you, you because. The question is, is a new type of movement possible? Yes, and you cannot really do it unless you try it out. If you are going to listen to us, you are not going to try it out. Because we already know, we already experienced something, and, and we have a tendency to generalize it and somehow look at it from the point of view of how movements are made and so on. We lack imagination. And therefore, don't listen. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Scott. But, I mean, there are a lot of other people who want to speak, but just to respond to, to that, respond? The, the, the opposite side of that is the article that was published in the New York Times a couple of days ago by Jim Miller, who basically, I mean, he's made a habit now over the past few years of just totally poo-pooing anything that any students want to do because it doesn't live up to his, yeah, yeah, because it doesn't that. live up to his <laughs> idealized version of SDS and of the 68 student movement in the United States. And uh, I mean, three, three years ago, he went so far as to refer to the student occupations as fascist, which was <laughs> preposterous. And so the, the question is, is how do we find a balance between learning from the historical mm -hmm. knowledge of 68 mm -hmm. while still maintaining our own a certain necessary idealism in a certain sense. There, there has to be a, 
Uh, and I think in this play, it's where we absolutely agree. You would call it spiritualism. I would call it romanticism, right? Yeah, there has okay. to be a romanticism to this. It has yeah. to be um, exciting and, and fun or something yeah. like that. Citizen Meek. Citizen Meek has a voice. Yes, he wants to say something. <coughs> W Polsce w upadku komunizmu pojawili się ludzie, którzy powołując się na drogę Mojżesza z, z Egiptu do, 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 do Palestyny mówili, że trzeba zgłazić wszystkich powyżej 40. <laughs> so after the fall of communism in Poland, there appeared people who would uh, point, like, point by analogy to Moses' way from uh, Egypt to Palestine, and they, they would advocate that everyone over 40 years old should be killed. Clearly, <laughs> 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 they must have been reading the same books as Irena. <laughs> Irena ma oczywiście rację, kiedy <coughs> mówi, że za, zawsze się, się, się rodzi coś nowego w wyniku tego, że nie słucha się ludzi o innych do doświadczeniach. To jest prawda. And of course she's right by saying that something new is born when people don't listen to those who have other experiences. That so much is true. Ale ja nigdy nie, nie, nie wyszedłem to dobrze na tym, kiedy nie, nie, nie słuchałem z naszych od siebie. But it's never been good for me when I didn't listen to those who are older than me. I mean, się spory były. No, and of course there were arguments. I na nasze, i na, na świat, i na świat, i na miłość, czy, czy Kołakowski, czy nie wiem, Patoczka. So miłość, czy Kołakowski, czy Patoczka, all had different interpretations of the world. Ale daję wam mnie możecie nie nie słuchać, ale ich słuchajcie. And I give you my word, you may disregard what I have to say, but you should listen to them. Just, uh, just to, 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 to make sure that you know, uh, you all know, Irena herself was actually uh, in prison for a long time after 1960. And then Jonathan Shell. Um, well, you, uh, Petra and Adam, were reminding us that <coughs> the revolution in Polish was a self-limiting one. Uh, at least that was the ideology, but actually the way things worked out, it wasn't so self-limiting. Like, where's the Soviet Union now? In other words, it was really an anti-systemic uh, uh, movement, and, it, and that system went under the waves of history. So it, unless I'm hearing things wrong around this table, that, that this new movement has a systemic critique to make, and I yeah. very much agree with what you're saying before. And I think one of the questions that you know relates to what, whether there should be specific demands or not is how that critique, which is just being developed, you know, which is kind of emerging, is to be honored and expressed, and how it should develop. Yeah. Okay. yeah. I I, to, uh, I have no answer regarding the Dukanism, except maybe that okay. while our critique might be to him, I reject the idea that the actionism itself can be utopian in by the very nature of the of Dukanism, which essentially, I don't think any action that is brought to the real world is really utopian. Mm -hmm. uh, I'd like to go back to our just a few on the matter of institutionalization, um, that there is the belief that there are institutions that will actually allow change in the current system we have here. Uh, this is very common in capitalist democracy to have a very strong two-party system, and I'd like to maybe refer to our Aaron's critique of the two-party system, which is essentially a which is essentially a very soft form of totalitarianism because the two-party system will not allow two parties that are radically different to operate within the same system. So essentially, the two parties will be nece will necessarily have to have only very cosmetic differences in outlook, ideology, and uh, political organization. So. Uh, Institutionalization with the expectation that 
it, there are institutions that will allow this change to happen. It requires these institutions to actually exist. You don't see any other problem? I, I don't. I, Richard, you talked about the two boards. Well, I'm wondering if any other institutions that. I mean, mine was really a question. Not, not, I wasn't asserting, you know, watch out, don't be utopian. I, 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 I was just, I was wondering what you think about it. Yeah, yeah. And no, in this case, I, I, I'm really curious. You said that there are some institutions, not the two parties. Or, or you think there aren't? I think there are. I think. I think, we'll have, I think we have to actually make the institutions to see the kind of power that will actually bring the change. Mm -hmm. Not that the current institutions are both essentially to ensure that change does not happen, or happen so slowly as to not happen. Mm -hmm. um, because, I mean, no matter how the party describes itself, in any major capitalist country, no matter how the party describes itself, it will ultimately have to operate within, within the boundaries uh, within the same economic, political, <coughs> legalistic boundaries, and not actually question the, yeah. root, the, the roots of the system. I mean, look at Greece, they elected a socialist government, and they're still pushing austerity and being balanced. I've been moved uh, by seeing unions down there. I, I, I was, I'm, when you talk about institutions, it doesn't have to be parties. So I, I'm well, wondering about uh, uh, any institutions. The, the, the like German bureaucracies have also yeah. largely been co-opted in this system. Yeah, I, I know. Uh, yeah. I mean, we, we have organizers who were there when unions started to become bureaucratically run by central of, by central offices beholden mm -hmm. to the current party system and abandoned the idea of worker councils. Mm -hmm. uh, I know that there must be a lot of questions, mm -hmm. but it's um, uh, we will have to close down very soon. So um, here it is. Um, uh, uh, what, what I'd like to do now, and I, I, you know, he just doesn't have enough time to be here with us. So um, um, I, I think that a lot of important questions have been raised. But those of you who would like to say something you know, which relates to the conversation or even to set up a new question, but do it in a kind of compacted form, are now invited to the zone. Because he did. <laughs> I know that. Okay. We'll start from that and we'll go around the table, but very quickly. Go ahead. This is a very mm -hmm. funny question, uh, so we can learn. Thank you. Uh, we're working on the think tank, trying to bring in the ideas, trying to sort of organize them and be able to understand ourselves and generate ideas from there. You talked about bacterial and viral ideas. And I would like to learn exactly how they were able to foment the ideas, bring them all together, and have everything be better understood, exactly what people wanted within the movement, and how it exploded from there. It's brought down a sizzle. OK, that's an important question, so let Adam tell us. <laughs> well, OK, let's go around the table then, so it will be quicker. Uh, no. uh, anybody there? Just move around. Yeah. Uh, I, I just, uh, yes, uh, Jan? Just a little addition to a question that I earlier said. Considering how the uh, neoliberal economic model has been fetishized in former um, uh, Eastern Bloc countries, especially Pol Poland, do you see a danger of Polish democracy, for example, being perverted to a point where it's irreformable, where basically financial institutions w will <coughs> dictate the uh, power structure? Great. Um, two, two remarks. Uh, one about uh, utopia. Uh, my Personal, I'm duly reminded that, I'm f that I am uh, f f uh, f from Poland, so my perspective is contaminated by the same farmers. Uh, my, my personal test for uh, being utopia and non utopia is if you talk about a new movement, if you talk about new, uh, new qualities that is perfectly fine and best of luck, if you start talking about, about how to create a new man, uh, uh, that is where it gets dangerous, uh, because mostly it very fast goes that the best w uh, best way of creating a new man is to cut the head of the old man. So <laughs> this is this How is yeah. Yeah. Uh, second thing about morality. <laughs> uh, I think sort of to slightly expand on what's been said, that the systems uh, begin to lose uh, lose uh, its um, 
uh, lose its hold on people, let's put it that way, and that was the way in communists, I think, and to some degree in Wall Street too, is, uh, is um, not necessarily when they punish the moral behaviors, <laughs> it's worse than that. When they set up a system where be behaving honestly is a losing proposition. Yeah. Because I think people want to be honest, uh, and, uh, and this, is the, 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 uh, this, is, this is even worse because it is my choice. I, I, I can be honest and lose, or, or, or I can be not honest and win. And, uh, and that way I get totally co opted because it was my choice to go that way when it's all, uh, when it's all said and done. Okay, thank you, Mikhail. Uh, a question to Adam because he said, in order to change society, you must to be needed by the society, otherwise you become a set. Oh, so in the 90s, late 80s, it was much, I, I, I assume it was easier to detect that need, because the question was either, no, you red or white, it's, you know, Siberia, or it was much more defined line. In this liberal society, it's much, I think it's much more difficult to detect that need <coughs> for, uh, for the change. And what I'm afraid in connection to that movement, aren't they, they might be making a mistake, making themselves into a sex because maybe there is no need for it. You do use the word they. Responsible. <laughs> <laughs> Responsible. <laughs> Robin, this direction, anybody here? Yeah? I've always. Yeah, okay, Scott. Good, here you have a stage. I mean, we rarely allow it because it, it should be more democratic and more, you know, <laughs> this way we do. It because we're we're we, we've been grappling with democracy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that was title title of my book. Title of my book. Yeah, maybe I should start from that, that the new person who postulated it is to be nowy świat bez konfliktu. I would like to start with the idea that when you postulate the, the notion of a new man, then you're also postulating a world without conflict. Otóż jeżeli ja mówiłem o tym odrzuceniu utopii, to ja mu mówiłem o, 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 o odrzucaniu wizji świata, w którym wszyscy będą piękni, młodzi, mama mądrzy, zdrowi i bogaci. So when I was talking about rejection, rejecting utopia, I was talking about rejecting a vision of the world in which everyone is young, healthy, beautiful, and wise, smart. <laughs> rich, Zwłaszcza, jeżeli jest jakaś partia polityczna, która mi to obiecuje. Especially when there's a political party which is promising all this. To, i, to ja wiem, że to się skończy nie, nie then I know it will end badly. Czy wi wi widzę w wyniku y, no, obecnej formy y, systemu gospodarki rynkowej, ja wolę to określenie niż y, liberalny neokapitalizm, ne ne czy widzę jakieś zagrożenie dla demokracji w Polsce? So, the regarding the question about whether I see any threats um, for the democracy in Poland in what I prefer to call the free market system rather than the neoliberal system. I see all kinds of threats for Polish democracy. But I don't think that what goes on in the market is the main source of threat. Korupcja, klientelizm, to są olbrzymie zagrożenia. Ale głównym zagrożeniem jest de de demokracja typu poputinowskiego. Broń bakteriologiczna. Regarding bacteriological weapons. To jest określenie Hawla, pochodzące z jego eseju Siła bez sił. It's a concept that comes from Havel from his essay The Power of the Powerless. Także ja bym bym raczej odesłał cię do, do lektury tego eseju, bo Havel to tłumaczy lepiej niż ni, 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 ni ja. 
So I would rather encourage you to read that essay because he explains it better than I do. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I don't know, but still. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> I would say that often we find ourselves living in a certain routine. And it's difficult to imagine that one could break with this routine. Te idee, one nas mogą wytrącić z tej rutyny. Najpierw umysłowo, a, a potem mentalnie, że zaczynamy się inaczej zachowywać. So these kinds of ideas can sort of throw us out of this routine first um, in a sense of mental and imagination and then in our behavior that we start to behave differently. Rosyjski pisarz Andoni Czechow napisał gdzieś, że to wielka sztuka jest, żeby z siebie kropla po kropki wyciskać niewolnika z hmm. siebie. The Russian writer Chekhov said that it's uh, there's great art in the ability to squeeze out the slave out of oneself one drop at a time. No, znaczy, żeby, Jump by drop. <laughs> żeby, żeby w pewnym momencie zmienić stosunek do, do, do samego siebie. So, the, the art of being able at a certain point to change one's relation to one, one's own self. Na, na, nauczyć się szanować ludzi za inne rzeczy, za których, niż, za któreśmy szanowali ich dotąd. And to learn to respect people for, for other things than those that we have respected them for so far. I ta broń, ba, 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 bakteriologiczna jest broni idei. And the bacteriological weapon is, is a weapon of ideas. I, i że, 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 rzeczywiście one w tym kontekście są silniejsze od czołgów. So, so indeed, in this context, they're stronger than tanks. How do you do it? The internet. Do That's a bacteriological one. It also requires good ideas. My question is how do they do it? Logistically, how do they do it? And then the, the question of logistics, it's like the, the answer that comes to my mind is the organic, organic intellectual of Gramsci, right? It's very similar to the Gramscian idea of counter-hegemony. Well, yeah, um, but I'm not talking theoretically, I'm talking about specifically in their movement. We keep like how did they, ideas I mean, I agree with you, but how did they do it in 68 when Poland tried, in 80 when Poland trying to do this? And how did they collect all the people that they were working on? Akurat tutaj muszę powiedzieć, że zgadzam się z tobą, z tego punktu widzenia bardzo warto czytać. So here I have to say that I agree with you. From this point of view, it's very worthwhile to read Gramsci. Gramsci był jednym z niewielu komunistów do tamtego czasu, który rozumiał, na czym polega nowoczesność. So Gramsci was one of the very few communists, communists of that time who understood the essence of uh, modernity. Ale to dla, dlatego, że miał więcej do oczynienia z Mussolini niż ze Stalinem. Mussolini trzymając Gramsciego w więzieniu zapewnił mu wolność intelektualną. By keeping Gramsci in prison, Mussolini gave him intellectual freedom. Jak by siedział u Stalina, by tak mądry nie był. If he sat in someone's prison, he would be quite so smart. No. Cokolwiek wam odpowiem na to pytanie, to zaraz po, po, po potem będę musiał powtórzyć za, za ile, no nie wierzcie w nie. So whatever answer I give you, I'm gonna have to repeat after Irena, don't believe me. To akurat była ta sfera, w której myśmy nie wierzyli starszym i mądrzejszym. In this sphere we didn't believe the older and the wiser. Starsi i mądrzejsi nam mówili, nie rób tego, bo jutro za to do więzienia Tymczasem sytuacja w Polsce była taka, że już nie rozstrzeliwano, a jeszcze szanowano. Problem, który jest głównym niebezpieczeństwem, to jest problem taki, że wy będziecie mówić, 
a ludzie nie będą was słuchać. So the main danger in this situation is the problem that you'll be speaking and people won't be listening to you. Ale jak zbudować język, żeby was słuchali, to już wy musicie. But how to build a language such that they will listen to you, that's, that's your job. Ja już jestem weteran. <laughs> I na to pytanie ja już nawet nie będę próbował o to odpowiadać, bo przy całej mojej megalomanii, tutaj ona już by była zamierka. Ale na Ale na pewno się trzeba odbywać do tego, co postrzegasz jako najważniejsze potrzeby tych, tych ludzi. I, 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 I o tym z nimi rozmawiać, i o tym do nich mówić. But you should always go back to what you see as the greatest, most important needs of these people and to speak about these needs with them. You don't know? I think that uh, he, he, Adam, did in 1968 exactly what you are doing now. That is that he lived as if, uh, he lived these ideas. This is what he did. You know, that the ideas were not only what was said, but what was also shown to, to the life, to life, to the, to the experience. And this is what the, uh, this essay, Power of the Powerless, is about, that is to, to live as if, and so on. And uh, that, that, is, uh, that is how they became like that. They, because he showed that it was possible, that, that, that such type of life was possible, that, it was, uh, that, that one, could, one could really do it, paying a price, but nevertheless could do it. And this was the most important part, I think. Adam also wrote a, an essay called The New Evolutionist, yeah. which is sort of the companion piece with the uh, you know, power of the power. Well, which inspired the power of the power. Right. Unless you don't know, it was Adam who asked, actually, Havel to write the power, the power of the powerless for the Polish underground clandestine journal. They had a conversation. Havel said something interesting. He said, "Why won't you write it down?" <laughs> and that's how the, how we had this uh, this essay, which is quite extraordinary. I only recently myself learned about it. So, so I think. Uh, uh, but going back to the question of this vi this viral stuff, I do think, and there is something um, there is something very very important. I think everybody touched on it here, that you 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 have. Your power is in inventing language that goes outside of existing routine um, uh, speech of uh, within the world of politics, but not only. But that kind of language that really resonates. In other words, it's 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 not pretentious, which resonates with people, uh, you know, in. In Kansas. Right. It, 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 that's and, uh, understood. I mean, the thing that's extraordinary about Adam and Havel, just as far as their, their great accomplishments, it's a, it's, a, it's a language of radical critique, but that's understandable. You know, it, it, that, that, that's a key to the power. And it, it's really no, as I said, so And if you read Gramsci's critique of Mussolini, you know, this is a letter. It's a well, two page letter. Yeah. Very rapid. Yeah, yeah. If the language is, is critical, yeah. but understandable. I, I think that the key thing that Adam, Adam said at some point, and it's just it's a very simple formula, and something that you may want to keep in mind as you deliberate, is whatever you do, think of yourselves as people who have to be useful in what you do to those who are outside. Period. Mm -hmm. This is it. And uh, things will... Oh, well, oh, people are paying yeah. attention to you, so you have this the, is what the, I just the opportunity. Yes, yeah, yeah. It's, it's, it, the, the viral aspect is it, it's happening, and it's, right. it's like after four years in graduate school in academia, <laughs> I, I have I pretty much came to believe that ideas could do very little for the world, <laughs> you know, that they stay in these kind of tight enclosed spaces, right. that they barely leave in a language that anyone can access, and something <laughs> out by Wall Street has made that language accessible. It's made language that all of us wanted to believe could be got out there. It, it, and it's not just because we're putting things out there, it's because people are bringing it to, to the spaces that we occupy. And not just the spaces that we occupy. I stopped on Chambers Street, I mean, I know it's quite near the occupation, <laughs> at three in the morning the other day after that kind of, and ended up somehow in a, in a, in a conversation with about five different people, just completely randomly, who were all interested in what was going on with this, the protest that had happened there the other day. And you just sit there having this incredibly high level discussion with people that were, some of them had just come from work, you know? They were like, they were working on Wall Street. They had their briefcases under arms. I've never experienced anything like it. And I think there is something 
that, that bacterial quality. Is, is so there. to the moment, it's really important to seize it, and you know, and but 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 that how you are going to do that? It's it's uh, it's extremely yeah, challenging. Something. I I think it's important to remember that uh, Havel uh, was a playwright. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 he was Absolutely. an artist. Yes. And we are talking about symbolic, the imaginary. Occupying Wall Street is a symbolic yeah, act. Exactly. So I think this is what the direction we should think about. And, and, and that's why the, the language tweaked away <laughs> from the routine can can be of help. And, but you already know that. Um, thank you. Ah, that's good. <laughs> oh, last thing. <laughs> So when they ask me what I think about Occupy Wall Street, I said they're more effective for Wall Street than terrorists. So they're more effective in attacking Wall Street in that what they're doing hits at the very heart of the way of thinking on Wall Street or about Wall Street. It's more effective than the planes that hit the two towers. Dlatego, że te samoloty, one jakby utwierdziły ten system i jego wszystkie stereotypy i because the planes, in a certain sense, solidified the system and all its stereotypes and all its routines. And here, and I, for everyone to see, for the whole world to see, Wall Street is getting delegitimized by the people. The new American dream. <laughs>